we're going to talk about a few more things with the suturing techniques. So we're going to talk about extruding tissue, which there is another video that actually shows it on a person, but maybe I can demonstrate. So you have extruding tissue. You want to be sure you take your bite without grabbing that extruding tissue. So you go on either side of it. Make sure you have control of where your loop is. On this side, I do not want to catch the extruding tissue, so I'll make sure I can see what I'm doing. Now, when you're ready to tie the extruding tissue and get rid of that underneath, that, that loop is on top of it, which is going to help push it down. And then you're going to need to tie under tension, which means you're going to need to keep tension on one of them, but you're going to lift up on both of them and see what, as you lift, it's going to the extruding tissue. And if this was really human tissue that's a little bit slippery, it would fall down inside of it. So you lift up as you're tying and the extruding tissue gets pushed underneath. And see how I'm keeping tension on one of the sutures? Now that I've got the second knot, it doesn't matter. But that's how you deal with extruding tissue. Now I have a motto that I don't suture myself into the corner. So I guess maybe you can see it on easier. If I was suturing, I'd suture down along here till I got maybe to about here or here, it doesn't matter. Um, but I wouldn't suture myself all the way down so my last stitch I take is here. I would suture here and then I'd stop and then I'd take another, then I'd do my corner stitch here and then I'd either work, then I'd fill in with it. But I would make sure that I did not take this as the last stitch because then you're fighting yourself. There's not much room to work and you're trying to get in the corner, which is something that doesn't want to lay straight if you're not really careful and exact with what you do. So don't suit yourself into a corner. If you have trocar incisions and you're trying to close, and not even just that, when you're um, get if you're taking a you're going to be tying a knot near the corner, and it's an interrupted. I always say I don't want to put my knot in the corner because this knife is going to bevel up a little bit in the, as you're making that incision. It's going to be a little bit shallower here and so your knot, if you're taking the knot on the outside in the corner, may sit up in that little on the dermis that's the shallower and that may be more likely to spit. So this side it's a non-brainer because you're suturing towards yourself so the loops on this side which is where you want it and the knots medial. But then when you come down to this side, say I'd suture it all the way down there, now I'm coming into this side. I would do the same thing if I was doing an interrupted. I would keep my loop on this side in the corner and I would put my knot to that side, medial. So loop in the corner and the knot medial. And then when you're doing a trocar incision uh, and you're going to tie it down, the this may not show it as nicely. If, and I'm going to do it the other way so you can see a little bit better. If you take a, and pull it like this, see how it pulls the edges together? This was what I actually learned from the residents that I work with. And I'm always looking for ways to improve, so this was something I kind of added. You can see how it's going to lay. And if it's not going to lay nice, then you know you can take it out and, and do it again. But you can do pull it down parallel. It doesn't work if you do this. See how you pull up, it doesn't really close. But when you pull down parallel, it closes. Okay? So, and then you could tie it that way. This one's too short for me to do it, but you get the gist. Now, if you're, if you're trying to staple an incision closed and you don't have help and you've got a gap on it, one of the tricks that you can do is take your skin gun and just partially fire it till the tooth comes out just a little bit. So I have that tooth out a little bit, which is going to be a, a hook for me. So I'll take the one side and I'll pull it in, take the skin gun on the other side, catch it, catch the skin with that hook, and then you can go ahead and staple. Then you don't need the doctor to help you with it. So what do you do for taking the staples out? Um, if, if you're doing it in, if you put it in the drape or you need to get a staple out, you can just put it behind the teeth of your Adson. And then I'm not sure if it's going to work on the eighths as well as it does on human skin. Go behind and then you can just push the skin out of the teeth and there's one stupid little thread holding it on and then comes out. The other thing you can do, and I'm pretty sure this one I'm not going to be able to do by hand, um, if you don't have any instrument and you've stapled the drapes to the patient uh, and you want to get them off at the end, you hold this parallel 
And then again, you take the skin and you can just push it out of the teeth of the staple and remove it that way. That way you don't always have to ask for a hemostat, you can do it yourself. If you're taking a stitch, when I'm running a stitch, um, how do you manage the, the excess suture? I find that one of the ways, and it's now a way of life with me, is I'm managing it by using this my left hand, that's holding my, whichever one's holding the force up, to grab, to go around the suture like this, hold it out of the way, and then my fourth and fifth finger are holding it out of the way while I'm running it. And you can see it helps control it, pulling it down, and then getting my hand around it again so it's out of my way so I can suture. Now, um, when you're doing a, a deep dermal, and you're trying to take the first sides easy, going in here, and I'm gonna change this stitch to deep dermal. So you're going in here on the first side and it's easy. Because you can pull this, you can pull this um, back here or here, lift up. And you want to lift up more than you want to lift back. Because if you have a fold here and this needle can catch it, and then you have a pucker. This, so this side's not bad. On the other side, my thumb's out of it. Pull it through. I want to go straight down. My thumb's out, so I go counterclockwise to begin with. But if I want to do a nice big perpendicular bite, and I want to get a nice good bite of the dermis, I actually take my needle and push back the epidermis a little bit, and then I can go straight down. So use that back of the needle to help you. Now, um, this is gonna take a little bit longer. When you're doing that tie that leaves less of a knot in the corner that I call the, the sasso, because that's what I learned it from, but I understand it was actually invented at uh, CHOP. So I don't know what the name of it is. So you come out, and on this one, um, And you're coming down now. I always want my loop on this one medial. So I want the loop, excuse me a second. I want the loop over here on this side, medial. I want the free strand lateral coming out the corner. And then you put your hands through it and it's the bottom one that's gonna slide. So it's this strand on the bottom that's gonna slide when you pull it down. So you do that a couple times again, put my hand through, loop on the bottom, pulling the bottom through and going through one more time and pulling the bottom. And then the fourth time you actually go through it and then that cinches it down. And if you wanna make sure it's tight, you can just run your needle holder down to the end of the knot. And then sometimes if the corner's not meeting, I, I've mentioned this in some of the videos, but uh, if the corner's not meeting, and you want to come out and you see there's a little bit of a gap there, just leave a little little suture there and hold it until you either get your skin glue on or until you get your steri strips on. And then once you get those on and the corners meeting nicely, then you can go ahead and cut it off. Now, just one other thing I wanted to show you on the suturing station, this may be a, uh, something I just discovered. I t told you on one of my videos how to make these. Well, this is, I gave the doctor one who likes to, he practices every night with his endoscopic suturing. And he said it was too high for his the, the suturing box that he uses. So I'm gonna take this into him on Tuesday. And I wanted to make something that was a little flatter. Well, I already had this made and you know how they invent things by accident. I took, instead of using the microphone, I took two tiles and I've used the packing tape to tape them together here and here and then around. And it seems to be pretty sturdy. And then when I'm gonna go home and I haven't finished. I'm gonna suture this, sew this down and take this into him. And I'm thinking that this will work as well, if maybe not better than the suturing station. Cause see how high that's, that is? This one I can work right down on it. So you may want to do that if you decide to make your own rather than use the, uh, the microphone.